You're watching WB News First at 9 on Tucson's WB. And now, First Weather with Joan Lee. With high pressure in control of the southwest, we're falling back into that pattern of cool nights and warm days, cooling off to about 36. We're well on our way, 46 right now, with a light southeast breeze. Current temperatures across the nation clearly illustrate how far south Arctic air has dipped. Those negative numbers also clearly illustrate why our population grows during the winter every year. In the east tonight, clouds and rain spreading toward the northeast as the storm system works its way off into the Atlantic and in the northwest. A major storm system is setting up to cause some travel trouble in that area tomorrow especially. It starts off as rain as it comes farther inland, rain mixed with ice, snow farther inland. They're throwing up winter storm warnings. Even blizzard conditions are possible in that area tomorrow. A ridge of high pressure between us and them keeps the southwest warm and dry for at least one more day tomorrow. Very cool temperatures across the south. Some leftover showers along the tip of Texas. Those cool temperatures just about everywhere except Miami is expecting a high of 81. Always balmy there. Uh, lake effect snow is possible over the Great Lakes tomorrow thanks to the very cold air and the winds off the lake. They're expecting single digit highs across Minnesota and the Dakotas tomorrow. Tomorrow in southern Arizona expect highs in the 60s just about everywhere. Sierra Vista up to 66, Bisbee 62, 69 is Tucson's high and with mostly sunny skies we get to gain at least one more minute of daylight 534 is the sunset tomorrow night. Checking our rain gauge so far in 2004, well, we haven't gotten any rain yet. We're already two tenths of an inch behind and the expectation for rain this week, nil, because even though clouds are forecast to creep into our skies on Wednesday and Thursday, it's not gonna be enough. Another high pressure ridge builds up right behind it and temperatures this weekend will be well into the 70s, possibly closer to 80 than that seven day forecast indicates, Heather. Wow, almost. It's going to be very, very nice. Okay, good news. Thanks, Joan. In other news this evening, federal prosecutors have filed a new indictment against Martha Stewart. The charges of obstruction of justice, making false statements, and securities fraud remain. The government merely cleaned up some of the language, in the words of a spokesperson, as the case heads to trial. Alan Chernoff reports. The questionnaire about Martha Stewart, in the words of one lawyer in the case, is relatively lengthy and attempts to ferret out people who would be biased. Disqualifying factors for potential jurors include those with a strong opinion about Martha Stewart, people who have been following the case closely in the media, and investors in Martha Stewart Living Omni Media. I think that she has a strong defense. The case is really going to come down to credibility and who the jury believes. To convict, the jury will have to believe star witness Doug Faniel, former assistant to Stewart's stockbroker. Faniel is to testify that he told Stewart her friend Sam Waxel was trying to unload stock in Imclone Systems, which led her to sell her shares just before the Food and Drug Administration gave a thumbs down to Imclone's experimental cancer drug. Stewart and her broker, Peter Bakanovic, claim they had a preset agreement to sell the stock once it fell below $60 a share. Having done nothing wrong allows you to sleep, allows, you, allows you to continue your work, uh, gives you, um, gives you uh, the opportunity to, to think about other things. Stewart is also charged with securities fraud for publicly claiming her innocence. Lawyers say it'll be tough for the government to prove securities fraud, but on the obstruction charge, Prosecutors say they have evidence that Stewart was trying to cover her tracks by changing the computer log of a phone message from her stockbroker. The interviewing of prospective jurors is to begin on January 20th. Alan Chernoff, CNN, New York. Scott Cobry has first sports coming up next. Plus, oops, she tied the knot. The buzz on Britney's on, then off marriage. You're watching WB News first at 9 on Tucson's WB. And now, The Buzz with Joan Lee. Brought to you by Circuit City. Welcome back. For the third straight week, The Lord of the Rings Return of the King rules the box office. Studio estimates show the film took in almost $31 million over the weekend. Its total earnings, $292 million in North America alone. In second place, Cheaper by the Dozen, with just under $22 million this past weekend. The romantic comedy Something's Gotta Give rounded out the top three.
Ozzy Osbourne is reportedly out of a London hospital following his all-terrain vehicle accident last month. The rocker left the hospital on Christmas Eve, but tells a London newspaper he's not returning to Los Angeles until his doctors give the okay. Osborne broke eight ribs, his collarbone, and a vertebra in his neck during that tragic mishap. Good news, men. Britney Spears is reportedly a single woman again today. This after tying the knot with her childhood friend, Jason Allen Alexander, Saturday in a Las Vegas chapel. The couple quickly arranged an annulment which was to become official this morning. A source close to Spears says the wedding was a joke that went too far. A top police official says singer Ray Davies made a mistake when he tried to chase down two muggers in New Orleans last night. The founder of the British band The Kinks was shot after he chased and then confronted two thugs who grabbed the purse of his female companion. Davies chased the suspects but was shot in the leg. He was treated and released from a local hospital. Now, here's a quick preview of what's coming up tomorrow on The Daily Buzz. Thanks a lot, Joan. Coming up tomorrow on The Daily Buzz, we've got your first look at the most anticipated albums of the new year. We are taking you behind the scenes for your first look at In Style Magazine's Wedding Edition. And we are talking to Mandy Moore about her upcoming flick, Chasing Liberty. It all starts at 6 a.m. Heather, back to you. Scott Cobra is here to tell us about a big trade that happened today. We're talking about the Phoenix Suns, right, Scott? The Phoenix Suns, you know, they just made the playoffs just last year. Mm -hmm. They made it to the first round, but they haven't really done a whole lot since then. In fact, they've been losing a lot. Yep. So last month, what did they do? They went out and fired the coach. Well, that didn't help either. So today they got rid of $100 million in salary with a blockbuster trade that sent Stephon Marbury, two other Suns, to the New York Bricks, I mean Knicks. It was just a matter of time New York landed an all-star guard with Isaiah Thomas stepping in as the new team's president and the native New Yorker Marbury fits the bill. Marbury, who spent two seasons in Phoenix, will be playing for his fifth different team since joining the league just eight years ago other than Oscar Robertson. Marbury is the only other player to average more than 20 points and eight assists per in his career, Penny Hardaway joins Marbury in the trade along with Cesario Turbanski while the Suns reunite with Antonio McDice, who's been out for a year and a half with injury. Phoenix also gets Howard Easley, Charlie Ward, Poland's Mike Chick Lempe, and two future first round draft picks. And a little cash as well. A little more basketball for you. The Arizona Wildcats have climbed one spot in the latest AP poll to number three. This coming on the heels of a big win over the weekend as they showed no signs of inexperience or nerves playing in their conference opener on the road at Arizona State in front of a sold-out Wells Fargo Arena in Tempe. Salim Stoudemire just on fire with 26 points. Cats led by as much as 34 in the second half on the way to the their 17th win in their 18 meetings against their rival. Lou Olson's 700th career victory was a result of it as well, but the cool hand loot isn't about to dwell on the milestone. I think those wins will mean more once I'm no longer coaching, and then I can look back at them. But right now, they, you know, I'm, we just, we want 701. I think, you know, we have confidence from the last game, but at the same time, we looked at the films and noticed we did a lot of things wrong, and, and I think that kind of keeps our head at a, at a nice level. We need to forget what we did. You know, we had fun over the, over the weekend. We got our win. Now we got another win at home. Third-ranked Wildcats turning their focus to the Golden Bears of Cal Berkeley this Thursday at McHale, tip-off 6.30. So who's college football's national champion? Is it LSU or USC? Well, Arizona lost to both those teams, so they're not really sure. One player told me he thinks it's LSU. Well, today it was the Associated Press presenting the hardware to USC. Pete Carroll there, the head coach. The Associated Press, of course, is the writers, and on the other hand, it's the Bowl Championship Series made up of the coaches, and they're pretty much forced their hand to vote LSU the winner so a split national mm -hmm. championship is in order here USC beating Michigan in the Rose Bowl yesterday LSU yep. winning over Oklahoma Lots of bowl games. in the Sugar Bowl so yeah it's a little confusion there we'll I know for the BCS not really sure what's gonna happen next year too right right a lot of people are saying maybe just add that extra game mm -hmm. when you have a tie like that hopefully it won't happen again a lot of people would be happy with that decision I, I would yes <laughs> all right thanks Scott we'll be right back
You're watching WB News First at 9 for Tucson, Sierra Vista, and all of Southern Arizona. Welcome back with a look at what's coming up completely new and different on News 13 at 10 o'clock. Let's check in with KWD's Randy Garcia. Thanks, Heather. Cochise County's only Planned Parenthood Health Center is closing. Now clients of the Sierra Vista Center have to find a new place to go. Tonight on News 13 at 10, find out what steps Planned Parenthood is taking to be able to offer services in the area again. Plus, see how heart specialists are using a digital imagery to snap a better picture of heart problems. Those stories and so much more on News 13 at 10. We'll see you then. All right, we didn't have to wait long for warmer weather. Joan Lee's going to tell us about a nice seven-day forecast We again. have this little baby grapefruit tree in our backyard that we mm -hmm. had to cover up last night. 29 was the overnight <laughs> low. Tonight, about 36. It's not going to be that cold for the rest of the week. We're warming up into the 70s by this weekend as high pressure rebuilds after a little storm system sort of brushes us with clouds on Wednesday and Thursday, Heather. Hard to believe that New Year's Eve was just a couple of days ago. Well, New Year's Eve is the kind of night when people tend to do a lot of things they later regret. And with Britney Spears having a quick change of heart in the marriage department, we got to wondering about a Miami couple who rang in the new year with a ring in front of a live television audience of millions. Tonight, CNN's Jeannie Mose reports. That old Lang Syne sure can be an aphrodisiac. Among the cameras sending out live pictures of Times Square was the kiss cam. Couples are encouraged to kiss, even if they get confetti stuck on their lips. But no one had to cue this couple. I turned around and Greg was on his knee with a sign that said, Ashley, will you marry me? Nurse Ashley Robinson's thunderstruck look was striking. I was afraid you were going to say no. <laughs> Apparently everyone did. Because you paused so long I, and it seemed like you were, you know, I truly frozen. had a heart attack. Through the miracle of sign language we learned, she said yes. Did you have a sign in case he said no? No. 28-year-old Greg Sears knew where to kneel to get on TV since he was a technical manager of the New Year's Eve production. This was a backup in case that one got run over. Wait, wait a minute, you had a backup, will you marry me sign? Yeah. But Ashley was so unprepared she had to spit out her gum. This was their first look at tape of the proposal. <laughs> Ashley froze while waving to the camera. You look like the Statue of Liberty. <laughs> Somehow it seemed less phony than those reality show proposals. Will you marry me? Will you marry me? <laughs> I wanted fitting. the whole world to know how much I love this woman. <laughs> this engagement has already lasted longer than Britney Spears' marriage. Jeannie Mo, CNN, New York. Good for him. He's got a lot of guts doing that. That is a video they'll keep forever. I know, that's, that's really so sweet. And I'm glad she said yes, and I'm sure he's glad too. I'm sure he is. <laughs> Have a great evening. We'll see you tomorrow night. Good night. Good night. We know you had a choice. Thanks for watching WB News First at 9 on Tucson's WB.